Did you know that a rope, which looks so small and ordinary, can actually hold from hundreds of pounds to several U.S. tons? It's the same rope that American soldiers trust with their lives when they leap out of high-rise windows, a rope that keeps them safe and helps them reach and subdue their targets. But what exactly gives this simple cord such extraordinary strength? The truth is, making a rope strong enough to rely on is anything but simple. It starts with countless tiny fibers that have to go through a long series of transformations. With human skill and massive industrial machines working together, each fiber is stretched, twisted, braided, and treated with precision until they form a single unified structure. In this video, we're going to follow that transformation step by step and see how those tiny strands become the flexible muscle of the modern world, quietly holding things together in our everyday lives. Rope has a history that goes back much further than most of us imagine. Ancient evidence shows that the Egyptians were twisting hemp fibers into ropes thousands of years ago. Over the centuries, from the wind-driven sails of Viking ships to the great trading vessels that crossed the Atlantic, rope has always been present, a constant companion in the story of commerce and the conquest of the seas. And what's fascinating is that across tens of thousands of years, this humble strand has never stopped reinventing itself. Today, a very special version of rope has become the lifeline of one of the world's most thrilling extreme sports, bungee jumping. Made from thousands of strands of synthetic rubber, this elastic rope can stretch to many times its original length. And thanks to that, when someone leaps from a towering height, the rope doesn't just save their life, it transforms the fall into an unforgettable rush of excitement. To understand the journey of a rope, we must return to its very beginning, the source of its raw materials. From there, the process splits into two distinct paths, one rooted in modern petrochemicals and the other tied to traditional crops. But before we dive into the process, have you ever wondered which can withstand greater loads, natural fiber ropes or synthetic fiber ropes? For synthetic fibers, the raw material comes from petroleum, Offshore, massive drilling rigs stand like giant steel machines, plunging deep into the continental shelf to draw crude oil from thousands of meters below the seabed. Once extracted, crude oil is transported through pipelines, oil tankers, or enormous tanker trucks to refineries. In petrochemical plants, the crude is distilled to separate out light fractions, which are then processed into plastic pellets, such as polypropylene, nylon, or polyester. These pellets, no larger than grains of rice, carry within them all the essential mechanical properties, strength, flexibility, and water resistance. As for natural fibers, their origins lie in the fields and coastlines. Hemp, flax, coconut husk, or sisal are cultivated, harvested, and dried to obtain their fibers. Farmers cut the stalks or husks, extract the long strands and then bundle them into large bales. These bales, brown or pale yellow in color, rough in texture but tough in structure, have long been the traditional raw material for maritime and agricultural ropes. What makes natural fibers stand out is their strong grip and high friction, which prevent ropes from slipping even when wet. Before strong and sturdy ropes can be formed, what we first need is not the rope itself, but the base material. For synthetic raw materials, the process begins with familiar plastic pellets, such as polypropylene, polyester, or nylon. These pellets are fed into the hopper of an extruder, melted at over 480 degrees, and then forced through hundreds of tiny metal nozzles to create a continuous stream of filaments, each as thin as a strand of hair. To preserve their shape, the molten filaments are immediately passed through a cooling water bath where the temperature is controlled down to the exact degree to prevent cracks or fractures. They are then drawn through multiple rollers, stretched continuously at high speed. This stretching step fundamentally alters their mechanical properties. The polymer chains are aligned, giving the fibers greater strength while reducing elongation under load. 
Finally, thousands of these ultra-fine filaments are evenly wound onto spools, producing a precise supply of material ready for the crucial rope braiding stage. Meanwhile, with natural raw materials such as hemp, flax, or coconut husk, preparation leans heavily on manual labor. The coarse fiber bundles are soaked, pounded, and combed repeatedly to remove dust and short, brittle pieces. Craftsmen then carefully separate the longest strands, gathering them into even bundles before spinning. Experience plays a decisive role here. Too much force risks breaking the fibers, while too little leaves them uneven and misaligned. The result is a natural fiber that, although less uniform than its synthetic counterpart, grips firmly and offers high friction, qualities that make it especially suitable for traditional ropes used in agriculture and maritime work. Once the raw materials are ready, the next step is to transform loose fibers into ordered strands, a crucial stage known as spinning. Just as a skeleton supports the body, yarn forms the foundation for rope. In modern factories, thousands of ultra-fine synthetic filaments, each as thin as a human hair, are drawn from molten plastic and fed directly into spinning machines. Rollers continuously stretch them, keeping the strands straight and even before they enter the twisting shafts. Here, steel spindles rotate at thousands of revolutions per minute faster than the acceleration of a sports car engine. This intense motion tightly twists the filaments together, turning them into a seamless yarn, taut like a string of a guitar. The degree of twist is carefully controlled. Too little, and the yarn is soft and prone to fraying. Too much, and it becomes stronger, more elastic, and more resistant to tension. For natural fibers such as hemp, flax, or coconut husk, Modern machinery cannot fully replace the human hand. Every movement demands absolute precision. Squeeze too hard and the fibers snap. Too gently and they remain loose, uneven, and prone to unraveling under load. Years of experience allow craftsmen to sense the ideal tension, keeping each strand continuous and uniform. The rhythm of the wheel and the soft sound of fibers twisting create a process both manual and delicate. Even with industrial support, spinning natural fibers remains an indispensable step, for it alone creates stable, consistent yarns. If yarns are the individual threads, then this stage is the step of building muscle, transforming many fine strands into solid cable-like bundles. On the machine frame, hundreds of yarn spools are neatly arranged and pulled through rollers to keep them taut and evenly distributed. From there, they enter the twisting assembly where massive steel shafts spin continuously, tightly winding the yarns together to form cable bundles known as strands. Tension and twisting angle are always finely adjusted. Too loose and the strands will not bind firmly and may unravel. Too tight and the fibers risk breaking during the twisting process. What makes this stage unique is the balance it requires. Each yarn must share the tension equally, because if even one strand is weaker, the entire structure can quickly fail under load. For this reason, electronic sensors constantly monitor and measure the tension of each group of yarns to ensure stability. The final product is a thick, solid strand resembling a flexible cable, ready to be combined further into the rope's core and body. From individual strands, the process moves into braiding the core and body, the stage where a modern rope truly takes shape. This is when hundreds of smaller strands are united in a spiral or interlaced structure, creating strength far beyond what any single strand could achieve. In most factories today, ropes are produced using circular braiding machines. Dozens of spools are arranged around a rotating frame. As the machine runs, each strand moves in a circular path interlacing like braided hair, converging at the machine's center to form a smooth round rope. The advantage of this method is that the rope resists unwinding, has a neat surface, maintains stable load capacity, and feels comfortable in the hand. Sensors monitor the rotation speed and the tension of each spool, ensuring every strand participates evenly. 
If just one spool is too loose or too tight, the entire rope can become unbalanced. Another notable feature of braiding is the ability to combine different materials within the same rope. For example, a polyester core provides superior strength, while a nylon sheath offers softness, easier handling, and added durability. Thanks to this combination, modern braided ropes are both strong and flexible, making them suitable for climbing, rescue operations, extreme sports, and medium-scale maritime use. Alongside this, traditional twisting techniques still endure, especially for massive ropes used in shipping and construction. Unlike braiding, here the strands are twisted in opposite directions around a central core, producing thick, rigid ropes with diameters that can reach several dozen centimeters. However, most ropes we encounter today are braided ropes, manufactured by modern machines with high speed and precision. Once the rope has been braided into shape, it is still not truly complete without a final tempering step to stabilize its structure. On the production line, the rope is stretched and passed through a heat tunnel where streams of hot air ranging from 250 to 450 degrees envelop its entire surface. This temperature causes the plastic molecules to lock in their aligned positions, eliminating expansion or deformation that could occur under heavy loads. The process works much like tempering steel, making the rope's internal structure stronger and more uniform. In some factories, the rope is rapidly cooled immediately after heating, creating a thermal contrast that further increases durability. Thanks to this stage, the finished rope maintains a stable shape, resists unwinding, avoids slack, and preserves its tensile strength over long-term use. A rope meant to anchor a ship or lift heavy steel cannot be judged by sight alone. That is why strength testing becomes an essential step. This is the stage where every coil of rope must prove its ability to withstand force under extreme conditions. Inside the factory, the rope is firmly secured at both ends of a hydraulic testing machine. The system gradually stretches it, applying loads from hundreds to thousands of kilograms of force, simulating real working conditions. Sensors record every piece of data, elongation, maximum tension, and breaking point. On the screen, a graph appears, like a strength signature unique to each rope. If a rope snaps too early, it is rejected, and engineers analyze the cause, perhaps a defective fiber, uneven braiding, or improper heat treatment. Those ropes that pass the test are certified with precise specifications, safe working load, breaking limit, and permissible elongation. Thanks to this process, whether in maritime, construction, or rescue operations, passing the strength test is only a necessary condition. For a rope to truly endure in real-world conditions, it must undergo finishing and protection. This is the final stage, where every small detail is treated to ensure the rope can withstand harsh environments. First, the rope is coated with specialized protective layers. For ropes used outdoors, moisture-proof and UV-resistant coatings are the most important, preventing fibers from rotting under sun, rain, or prolonged exposure to seawater. Other ropes may receive additional treatments with oil-resistant or antibacterial chemicals to extend their service life in industrial or hostile environments. These coatings act like a thin armor, shielding the entire internal structure. The next step is end treatment. When cut into lengths, fibers can easily unravel. To prevent this, rope ends are heat sealed, glued, or fitted with plastic sleeves to hold the structure firmly. For premium ropes, the ends are even hand-stitched with specialized thread, ensuring they will not fray even under repeated tension. Finally, the ropes are wound into coils or bundled, labeled with load capacity and durability specifications. Large coils can weigh hundreds of kilograms placed on pallets and tightly wrapped for transport. Only after completing this entire finishing and protection process is the rope truly ready for its journey, whether in maritime construction or rescue, where it becomes a trusted tool. From tiny pellets of molten plastic or rough bundles of natural fibers gathered from fields and coastlines, 
through a series of meticulous steps, spinning, braiding, heat setting, testing, and finishing, a new rope is finally born. This journey not only produces a familiar material, but also serves as clear proof of how humans have transformed fragile strands into the muscle strong enough to support the modern world. From construction sites and bustling ports to sheer mountain cliffs, ropes have become a reliable companion, carrying the responsibility of safety and binding strength together. Every twist, every braided layer embodies precision and engineering, ensuring that by the time it reaches the user, the rope can guarantee safety in any situation. And what about you? Between the thick, rugged power of traditional twisted ropes and the superior flexibility of modern braided ropes, which would you trust more when facing extreme conditions? Leave your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to hit like and subscribe to the channel to continue following the journey of everyday materials that hide within them an entire world of technology.